Hello, in this video I will go over namespaces and packages in Tickle and some basic applications. So first of all, what are namespaces? Well simply put, namespaces are an encapsulation of variables and procedures within Tickle and are typically used to write reusable libraries. Now, the nice thing about namespaces is that variables and procedures within a namespace don't conflict with other variables and procedures. This frees the programmer to pick whatever names they choose since they all end up getting prefixed with the, with the namespace name. So as you can see in this little example, I have a namespace called myspace, and in it I have a variable called myvar. Now that myvar can be accessed with the myspace prefix. Additionally, I have a procedure called myproc, which accesses myvar without the prefix, since it's within the namespace, um, but then that has to be accessed with the prefix outside of the namespace. So namespaces, they can be used on their own to encapsulate code. Uh, so if you're building some libraries for your analyses, um, this can be a way to keep everything uh, centralized and, and not have any conflicts with other parts of your code. Uh, but they're often tied to a package with the same name. So a package is a method to load library files um, into an analysis or into whatever script you're running. So packages, they're installed within the lib folder of a Tickle installation and they can be loaded by simply calling package require and then the package name. So an active Tickle installation of Tickle already comes pre-bundled with numerous packages, including Ticklelib, which is the standard Tickle library. So that you can access things like math linear algebra, or you can run a Monte Carlo simulation. Um, and there's a bunch of other ones. I'm gonna go over a few examples. And it's as simple as requiring the package with package require, and then you can import in commands from that namespace and access a bunch of functionality that's not in the base Tickle language. Because without packages, Tickle is a very simple and lightweight language. If you aren't leveraging the power of Tickle packages yet, you're missing out. To demonstrate just a few features available in the Tickle standard library, I prepared a little example file. So I prepared this little example file here to just demonstrate a few of the features available within the Tickle standard library. So for example, you can do some linear algebra routines. So I have her here, you can transpose a matrix, or you can access a column. Now there's a whole bunch of other things. You can get the determinant of a matrix. You can solve a, a system of equations. There's a whole lot more in that package. And there's a whole bunch of other math libraries. There's calculus, there's statistics, you name it. Uh, there's also a bunch of things with data structures. So just as an example here, I'm just using the struct list package. And within this, you can do some functional programming. So if you want to map uh, the format command over a list, you can do that. Additionally, uh, there's some like file utility things. So there's the file util package. This allows you to do very simple reading and writing of files. You can insert into files. I'm just showing one of the, f one of the functions here, uh, file util cat, which is to read a file. And then there's also the JSON package. And the JSON package allows you to parse JSON or JavaScript object notation to dictionary. And the useful thing about that for open C's, if you're using open C's, is that the print command has a JSON option. So you can actually print all of the model information to a JSON file then read it and convert it to dictionary. And then you can query different things within the model. So I have that little demonstration right here. So I'm just going to run this in open C's, which is the main thing that I run tickle in. And so as you can see, transpose this matrix. So the rows became the columns. And I can get a column from, from that matrix. I formatted one, two, three, four into floating point with six decimals. And I was able to access the node information from the JSON file um, from the OpenSeas analysis. So that's about it uh, for this example. The example file I just went over is available at the link in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.